Welcome back to the manufacturing automation course. So, let me remind you that overall what we are talking about is the automatic assembly system and in the automatic assembly system as we said that we can have the inline type or the rotary indexing type and the basic problem that we may have in the automatic assembly is the feeding of the small engineering parts. So, those small engineering parts are fed very large in very large number and the basic problem is that all these parts have to come in a right orientation. So, keep in mind that there is no human being involved here and the parts are stacked in the bowl okay, and they can be stacked in a very different orientation and those parts have to come from the bowl out of the bowl through the delivery chute in the right orientation. So, that is what we are now talking. About. Our uh, job is to feed the parts in the right orientation. So, therefore, if the parts are not coming in the uh, desired orientation, so we have to either reject the parts or we have to reorient the parts. So, therefore, in the uh, earlier class we have discussed the part orienting devices and those part orienting devices as we said that they can be either active or passive. Okay. Active orienting devices are such that they will actually reorient the parts all right, and put the parts in the desired orientation on the track and if it is the passive orienting device, so they cannot reorient the parts, but they actually reject the parts if the parts are not coming in the desired orientation. So, based on that we have the uh, difference, we have the two groups of the orienting devices in bowel system or in bowel tooling or out of bowel tooling. So, I am just summarizing that that what we have discussed in the earlier class that the in bowel toolings they are they can be passive or active and they are normally kept inside the bowel. So, they can either reject or reorient the parts we have seen some of them. So, one of them was uh, slot which was the active orienting device others like wiper blade like the slot like the cutout V cutout or the scallop okay, th those were the, uh, the passive orienting devices because they reject the parts. Now, we have seen that the orienting device shape and the type of the orienting device actually should be according to the parts. For example, we have discussed uh, parts like uh, uh, here as we have uh, as you can see the headed parts. So, the headed parts it is better when the headed parts can actually be fed hanging on the head if that orientation is the desired orientation or as you can see that here we have shown that these are the washers and then for these washers it is only a ledge which is sufficient. We have seen the parts with the heavier side and the open side. So, we saw that uh, the scallop is very suitable for a parts to go through when it is coming with the closed side or the heavier side down or we have seen parts like where we have the difference in the diameter at the top and at the bottom. So, for them again that V cutout is convenient for the parts the lower diameter with the smaller diameter up or for example, you have the we have the U shaped parts that we have discussed. So, for them the it if they can ride on the rail that is very convenient. So, a rail can be designed for example, on which they can ride or we can have for example, the parts like this, this we have not discussed. So, this is another uh, arrangement of the, the uh, orienting devices. So, this is the narrow track all right, and the track, track is being narrowed by a wall projection. So, as you understand from this device from this arrangement of the orienting device that because of the narrow track the parts coming with this orientation and the parts are like this that they have the two different diameters all right. So, the parts coming with this orientation will be rejected because this diameter is not able to negotiate through the space between the narrowed wall under the narrowed wall and the track where whereas, the parts coming in this orientation this width will go inside inside the space between the wall projection and the track and it will go through. Okay. So, let us say that this is the desired orientation for us. So, all parts which are coming 
through the wiper blade which are not in this orientation or not in this orientation they will be rejected through the wiper by the wiper blade and these parts when they are coming after the wiper blade parts with this orientation will be rejected because of the wall projection. So, here there are two uh, orienting devices wiper blade as we have discussed earlier and this is the wall projection or the narrow that, that makes the track narrower. So, this is both of them are the passive devices because they are actually rejecting the parts. Look at this arrangement of the orienting device. Suppose we have the orienting device for a rectangular part like this. Okay. So, here what happened is that there is a narrow track and that narrow track has been done by a different orienting device. Now, this kind of uh, orienting devices that is narrow track or V cutout or scallop they can be as a block for example, they can be inserted here. So, as you can see from here that this is the arrangement which is made here through this you can actually put the uh, block like this so that the track can be narrowed or you can put a V cutout for example or a scallop for example. Okay. So, in this case for these rectangular parts if the rectangular part is coming in this direction it will go through go it will come from here, but in this narrow track it will be unstable and they will be rejected. So, the narrow track is a passive device and all the parts which are in the this direction in this orientation they are the desired orientation for us. So, these kind of parts will go through because this is the width of the part which will be able to negotiate this narrow track and they are all going through. So, uh, employed to orient parts lengthwise end to end while permitting only one row of pass. Okay. Now, uh, while analyzing the orienting system suppose we have a part like this where the weight at this uh, at this side is more or this side is heavier because the part is such where we have a central hole, we have a blind hole and therefore, this hole is closed here. So, this side is heavier than this side. So, when such parts are being fed, so before we design the orienting device orienting system, now what happens is we have to find out that what are the different orientations the parts can have. So, uh, normally a soft aluminum floor is arranged and those parts are randomly at random they are, they are thrown to that soft aluminum uh, floor uh, at a random basis okay. and seen that after uh, being thrown at from a certain distance of course. And after being thrown how those parts are resting on the alu soft aluminum uh, floor. See, so for example, suppose we, our desired orientation is this that is the heavier side down alright. So, the parts which are coming they can have four orientations as I discussed earlier. One orientation is let us say A where the heavier side is down, another orientation is where the heavier sound is heavier, heavier uh, side is up or the heavier sound side can be to the left or the heavier side could be to the right. So, these are the four basic orientations that this kind of a part can come here. So, suppose if we use a step and we design the step in such a way that most of the parts coming in the orientation A will not be affected as you can understand that when they are coming here with this orientation since this side is heavier. So, they will simply fall and remain in this orientation uh, after falling from the step because the step height is designed in such a way. Now, many of the parts which are coming either in the orientation B 2 or in the orientation B 1, they will actually be some of them will actually be reoriented in the orientation of A. For example, suppose we have the B 1. So, most of the B 1 after falling from the step it can actually fall like this and it can remain in this uh, orientation. If it is coming with this kind of a, this orientation B 2 for example, the B 2 can be toppled and this will this may become C in orientation C or it may actually become because this side is heavier it may fall in such a way that it will be in the orientation A. Now, after the step there is a, a cutout here scallop cutout. So, through the cutout 
the orient parts with the orientation C will not be able to go through because this space inside diameter open diameter okay, inside open space cannot be able to negotiate this space and they will fall. Okay. But the parts which are coming with the heavier side down for example, they will be able to negotiate because the down uh, the, the bottom is closed there is no hole it is a blind hole as I said. So, it will be those parts will be able to negotiate and they will go through and that is the desired orientation here. All right. And then it will come here and this is a, a sloped track with ledge, this ledge is uh, protecting the parts from falling down and all the parts with this orientation A will be going through. Now, suppose this is the uh, sector of a vibratory ball feeder and let us see how this scallop can be made. Okay, the scallop cut out because you cannot make that scallop randomly and it has to be made depending on the shape of the parts and since we do not want this internal diameter to negotiate. So, we have to see we have to find out that what is the shape and what is the size of this internal diameter and what is the type of the movement that the parts are making on the track of the vibratory ball feeder. Okay. So, uh, here is a diagram which is showing that how the parts are moving along the uh, track of the vibratory ball feeder. Let us see here, the part starts making from this point. So, as we said that if the dimensionless normal track acceleration if you remember a n by g n is more than 1, we have shown that theoretically, then, then the parts will hop, it will leave the track and it will because of the torsional torsional force it can actually go ahead. So, part, parts will jump hop and it will go like this. So, after going after falling to the track of the vibratory ball feeder it will actually go ahead a little bit parts sliding forward and then after sliding forward it will actually go back this is because of the type of the motion or the type of the vibration that is imparted on the uh, on the parts located at the track. Once again the type of the I have shown that earlier that there are two types of this one is this vibration, okay. another is this vibration. So, because of the combi because due to the combination of these two torques these two um, kind of torsional uh, torques. So, the parts will go hop like this it will go ahead because there is a torque here and then it will come back okay, and then again it will start uh, hopping and it will go forward like this. Again it will behave the same way part slides um, forward and then backward and then again jump and so on. Now, let us see that this hop from this point to this point is let us say 2.72 millimeter for certain amount certain value of the frequency amplitude of frequency and amplitude of vibration and certain value of the uh, you know uh, vibration angle. Let us say vibration angle normally used is 20 degree. Okay. So, for that let us say this hop is 2.72 millimeter. All right. Then after uh, falling on the track it will go ahead by let us say 0.86 millimeter. Okay. Then it is going back and going back is 0.91 millimeter and then the effective hop that we are having although it is 2.72 hop the parts are actually having, having, but because of the forward movement and coming back that is the backward movement the effective hop that we are having is 1.75 millimeter. So, uh, knowing this information and knowing the di internal diameter of the of the part we can actually design this scallop cutout which is a passive device so that the parts with the uh, with the open side down cannot negotiate this scallop and they fall because these are the passive devices so they will reject the parts they will not be able to reorient the parts okay whereas the step can be considered as an active device because in the steps many of the parts in the many in the, in the different orientations they are actually reoriented to the desired orientation let us say heavier side down. So, therefore, 
these steps can be considered as a uh, as an active device. Now, let us now discuss the uh, out of bowel reorienting devices and I will remind you that out of bowel reorienting devices are always used outside the uh, vibratory bowel feeder and they are normally active orienting devices because if had it been passive orienting devices the parts will be rejected, but the parts cannot go to the bowel back because these parts have already come out of the bowel and now they are going to the uh, to the assembly system to the assembly uh, machine all right so let's say this is a feed track i will deliver or the delivery chute let's say okay so parts have come back uh, come out of the uh, of the bowel feeder and now the part orientation we desire is the heavier side down so the parts are such that center of gravity will be here all right and if the parts are coming either with this orientation or with this orientation, okay. they will hit the bridge here which is located in the delivery chute and after hitting the bridge since the center of gravity here is the below and the heavier side will be down. So, the part will be reoriented with the heavier side down and it will always come out of the delivery chute with this orientation with the heavier side down. Meaning, that if the part is coming with the heavier side up for example, it will hit here and it will be reoriented because the heavier side is here and the center of gravity is at this point. Or for example, from the feeder the parts are coming in different orientations the same parts let us say with the heavier side up or with the heavier side down. So, when it is coming with the heavier side up and we want the parts to come out of this delivery chute should with the heavier side up uh, sorry heavier side down in that case we can put a pin here and when it is coming from the feeder it will hit the pin like it was in the bridge case so then they will be reoriented either they are coming with the heavier side up or with the heavier side down both ways they will actually after hitting the pin they will come with the heavier side down only which is the desired orientation so this is another uh, example of the uh, of the active orienting device which are used normally as i said and out, as out of bowel tooling here is an interesting out of bowel reorienting device okay and uh, these devices are used for cup shaped parts like this okay here is a kind of a cup shape so what we have in the reorienting device is a this is a selector wheel this is called the selector wheel uh, system and here we have this is a stationary uh, outer casing and inside that there is a selective wheel or a selector wheel which has the grooves here like this okay. and this selector wheel rotates or indexed indexed in the sense that inside the housing the selector wheel will rotate and dwell for some times okay, when they are coming or when they are aligning to the exit. Let us say this is the exit and through which the parts can come. All right. Now, when from the feeder the parts are coming either with this orientation that is the open side up or with the open side down, they will be coming here and they will fit into this protrusion if they are coming with the open side up. So, open side up will go in and there is a protrusion here and when it is rotating like this all right it will be it will come this position will come here through this and it will be retained here it will not go down because as you understand that this has climbed here this is in the protrusion all right. So, then with the further rotation okay, when it will come to this exit this will be stripped off from here and the part will go and let us assume that this is the right orientation as we desire. The desired orientation out of the out of the delivery chute the way that this part will be uh, assembled in the assembly machine is with the uh, open side up. So, at once again let us say this example that part will come like this all right then while rotating it will go to this position but here there is an exit 
but it will not come because the part is located or part is held by the protrusion. So, it will go further this protrusion will not be able to hold any more the part and the part will be stripped off part will go here. Now, let us take another example for, for suppose the part is coming like this with the open side down when it will come to this it will be in this position right. That means, since the open side is down it will not be held by this protrusion, but it will be located in this way. So, when it will go from here to here the part will come down because it is not held by the protrusion the part will be stripped off and it will come here and again when it is coming the part will be in this orientation okay, with the uh, open side up. So, that is our desired orientation therefore, all the parts whether they are coming to the uh, orienting device with this orientation or with the, this orientation always will be getting the parts with the orientation which is desired which is the uh, closed which is the open side up. Okay. Now, this consists of a stationary container as I said that this is the stationary container in which a wheel this is the wheel which is the um, selector wheel this is mounted with radial slots these are the radial slots all right. This wheel is driven by an indexing mechanism because when this position will come here it has to stop for some time. So, the part to be stripped off and part to slide down the um, slot and going to the delivery chute. So, this kind of indexing mechanism may be a Geneva wheel for example, Geneva mechanism for example that we have uh, discussed earlier to ensure that slots always align with the chute meaning that slot this either here or here the slots have to be aligned. So, these are the two exits one exit is here and one exit is here. So, from where the parts can actually slide down the um, slot and the to the delivery chute. So, this is also a simple mechanism, but very effective mechanism for particular parts here you cannot reorient or feed parts of any other kind which are not of the uh, cup shape. Okay. So, therefore, again I will repeat that uh, orienting reorienting devices can be designed depending on the parts and it is very easy to design because you know the part configuration and then you can say that out of the existing uh, orienting devices you can combine them you can select one of them or you can design a new orienting device for that part to be reoriented to make an active device for example. Now, uh, next topic that we will be discussing here are the feed tracks. So, let us let me tell you what are the feed tracks like we have discussed the bowel feeders different kind of bowel feeders. So, those bowel feeders are feeding the parts and the bowel feeder cannot be located very close to the assembly machines because parts which are coming out of the bowel feeder they have to go to the assembly machine for an assembly. So, since it cannot be located very closely. So, there has to be some path through which the parts will go to the uh, machine. So, those are called the feed tracks all right. Here are some of the examples of the feed track this is to provide easy access to automatic workheads and the assembly machines part feeders are usually pay, placed some distance away from the workhead. Now, for example, here this example you can see that this is for the cylindrical parts it is a very uh, convenient and very easy design this is open here and through this the cylindrical parts are being fed. Here the flat parts so this kind of a flat part is coming uh, this is the clamp okay. and this side is open this is the rod which is which is preventing these parts from coming out okay. and through this slot the flat parts will be coming from the bowl feeder to the machine or for example, for screws for screws what we can do is you can have a slot as we have seen in one of the orienting reorienting devices and the parts may actually hang in the slot and come out. For example, this is the example which is shown here part tracks connect part feeders to workheads of assembly machine and here is the part track which is for the headed parts like in here. Okay. So, 
these are the uh, spaces which are open normally kept in the feed tracks so that if anything goes wrong, any clogging happens within the part feeder, uh, sorry, feed track. So, it you can quickly have the access. So, to have the access, they are actually open, all right. Or you can have the easy access by opening this lead, for example. Okay. Here you can see that there are windows and if these windows will not help, in that case you can quickly remove this, uh, this casing, okay, this cover and you can have the access so that this clogging can be removed. Now, uh, how to design the feed tracks and what kind of feed tracks normally we have, let us see. So, feed track design is uh, crucial because you have to, uh, you have to first of all find out the actual diameter or the space inside the feed track so that the parts are not reoriented inside while going. Because we have ensured that within the feed track, the part is in the right orientation. So, while going, the part feeder space should be such that the part is not reoriented, all right. And also, it can have the easy access to the, uh, to the uh, work head. Which, which from after the ball feeder, it is going to the work head. Easy access means what I mean to say is that it can actually smoothly go through that and does not uh, get clogged. So, part feeders are basically of two types. One is of vertical delivery of parts, where we use actually the uh, gravity for parts to fall or we can have a horizontal delivery of the parts. Okay. Here, uh, this is the schematic diagram or the line diagram of the feed track. The uh, parts are coming from the feeder and it is going to the assembly, to the work head. So, in between we have the feed track and through the feed track, the parts are uh, going like this. It, uh, here it is the sectional view. This xx section is here and they are going to the work head. This is open space for the easy access to the, to the parts. And here it is the vertical delivery of parts where the parts are coming falling down by gravity. So, for the vertical design, the time of delivery T p will be given by the time taken for a part to fall its own distance, own length equal to its own length. So, for example, in this case, okay, what we are having is the T p is equal to 2 L by G root over. So, this is coming from earlier we have said that L is half a t square okay, and therefore, the t square is 2 L by acceleration and t is equal to root over 2 L by acceleration. This acceleration is in our case it is the gravity. right? So, therefore, we are using this L is the part length and uh, G is the acceleration. So, the according to this equation. 2 L by acceleration root over, this will be the uh, T p which is the time taken for a part to fall and that will be the distance of its own uh, length from the beginning to the end. Rest of the things we will discuss in the next class. Thank you very much.